they once had. Hugh Edwards is the chief executive of UK Active. Hugh, back in December, you were warning that there would be large-scale closures of gyms. Has it happened? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, by by after by March of of this year, when we were in the the, the depths of the that, that lockdown, we were estimating that we'd lost around 400 gyms by that point. Um, but we have got since then, obviously, the reopening of of gyms and 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 and, and swimming pools on the 12th of April, followed by group exercise on the 17th of May. So, yes, you're right in terms of those projections um, across public sector but if you're looking across the whole of the board there is a a cautious positivity around the return because there's been such a huge amount of pent-up demand um, across people and there have been some very positive figures especially in the private sector whilst they're obviously maintaining concerns around around the public sector as well. Hugh did I get that figure right that footfall in gyms run by local councils is 70 percent of what it was in 2019? Yes it, those are the pre yeah pre-covid is at 70 percent of what it was pre-COVID and, and what's driving that um, is, is obviously there are, there are obviously major restrictions and challenges that local authorities are facing. Um, the, the operators themselves are very much rationalising their facilities around gym and, gym and swimming um, but what you are f seeing is a, is, a, is, a, is a stripping away of wider services that those facilities provide whether it be multi-sport, whether it be health and bespoke programmes around social prescribing, whether it be interventions for the most vulnerable in society as well, like disabled people. And so that's a real challenge for that sector going forward, especially when there is a, remains a funding gap for the public sector. Well, this morning I spoke to Ashton Turner. He owns a small private gym. It's in Parsons Green in West London, and it specialises in personal training for small groups of people. Membership there fell in the last lockdown, and income fell by £100,000 over the year. I think the third lockdown was probably the worst of them for us. We had about 145 members and then we reopened our doors of 84. So it was quite a considerable drop for us in that, in that kind of final lockdown. Why do you think some people have decided to just stay away from the gym? What we've kind of noticed, I think there was a lot of online options. People can kind of the flexibility of training at home in their own time and realise that they can actually do a lot you know, without the need to go to a gym. So I think, I think some people have kind of carried on with that because it gives them that added flexibility. I think we find a lot of people haven't been able to go on holiday maybe for the you know, best part of a year to 18 months. I think they're, they're probably wary of being pinged in a space where in a global gym, the bigger chains where they don't know who's in there and they have less control over you know, what's going on, who's, who's coming into the gym. You know, schools go back in September. August is always a notoriously quiet time for the gyms anyway. It's, it's usually our worst month. And I think people, once sort of children back into school and life returns a bit to normal, they'll, they'll start to pick up uh, on memberships again. That was Ashton Turner, who runs Evolved 353. It's a gym in London. He went just from UK Active. Those figures on footfall we talked about, they're for gyms run by companies for local councils. They're lower than they were before the pandemic. Will it be pretty much the same for the private ones, do you think? Well, the private sector has been, you know, has been, had a very strong response, actually, since the reopening on the 12th of April. Um, so a number of the operators, especially the multi-chain operators, recorded probably the, you know, the, the, the strongest first week since reopening in their history. And now you look at um, operators like Pure Gym, who had over a million visits in that first week. If you look at some of the wider operators, David Lloyd this week talking around getting back to pre-membership levels, pre-COVID levels of membership. And so there is, a, there is a cautious positivity there, but there is obviously a, a need for greater support, especially amongst independents. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of that, you know, going especially for the private operators, is being driven by that pent-up demand to get back into facilities, but also a confidence around um, the quality of the health and safety procedures have been put in place. But as you rightly say, the challenges do remain, especially for the private operators around unrecognised, unrecognised issues around, unreconciled issues around rent. And as you mentioned, um, especially from the public sector perspective, um, there is a funding gap um, which needs to be reconciled in terms of the conversations with government. Um, and we're having those conversations right now. Uh, and that is leading regrettably to a, res a restriction and rationalisation of of the service that they can provide at this current point. Hugh Edwards, thank you.